Okay, so we've got all of our pistons assembled now. We've got everything put together. We did go ahead and put our bearings and our caps and our connecting rods. Um, and now it's time to check the clearances on the crank and the piston itself. We're going to use our Proform ring compressor to help guide the piston into the block. So we line it up. We don't want the connecting rods or the piston to, to actually touch the piston walls any more than they have to. So we're going to take our time here catch the piston rod as it comes out so it doesn't touch the walls any more than it has to. So now it's released. Let's set this out of the way. I'm going to slowly guide the piston down onto the crank. And then we can rotate the entire engine, making sure that nothing is in the way. Make sure you hold on to the piston, obviously, so it doesn't pop out of the block as you're rotating it. Hold on to the conducting rod. Go ahead and turn it over. And we'll get our plastic gauge and show you how to actually check the clearance on this. Be right back. So we've got our little piece of plastic gauge here, and just like we did with the crank, we're going to lay it across where we're going to be torquing down the cap on the piston rod. So we're going to hand tighten these bolts down. Now these bolts go to 70 foot-pounds of torque and just like we did with the crank we're going to do it in a series of three. So we'll start at 30, then we'll go to 50, and then we'll go to the finishing torque of 70. So now that I know my bolts are in, I know the piston's not going to fall out of the block, I'll go get my torque wrench and we'll torque it down. So we've got our torque wrench. We're going to start, as I said, at 30 foot-pounds. And then we'll work our way up from there. The reason we like to do this gradually is so if anything is in a bind, we're not putting a lot of stress as we're torquing down. We're just taking our time going up to the finishing torque. So we've got it at 30. We're going to go up to 50. And go up to our finishing 70 foot pounds of torque. Okay, so once we've gotten down to our proper torque, we're going to take everything off, check our plastic gauge. We're going to do this for all the pistons down through here, but we're going to, we wanted to show you the process on one. We'll take this off, show you what we do to check it, and do this with all the pistons before we finish. Okay, so we've taken our piston and rod back out. We've got our plastic gauge mark here, and we've got our gauge that came with it. I'm going to go ahead and check it here, just like we did with the crank. Um, checking the rod clearance, we've got about a thou and a half of clearance on the rod. That's a little tighter than we'd like it to be, but it is within specs. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and check the rest of the rods, see if that clearance holds for all of them. If it does, we may look at getting some extra clearance bearings. If not, we may let it ride the way it is. Um, so let's check the rest of them. We'll come back and tell you what we decided. Okay, so we've completed checking all of our rod clearances across the block. We came in with the plastic gauge at a thou and a half of clearance uh, consistently across the block. So that's a little tighter than we would have liked. So we actually got a micrometer and checked our measurements more accurately with the micrometer. Um, what we actually came up with, just so you know this, if you're using plastic gauge, there is some discrepancy when you're using it, that we came back with a micrometer and checked everything, and we actually came to three thousandths, or almost three thousandths of clearance across it, which is actually on the looser side. We'd like to see about two and a half thousandths, or two thousand and a half, uh, across the block, but we're within that range, so we're going to let it run. Uh, should be uh, good. Be a little on the loose side, but it'd be okay. One thing I did want to mention when you're checking these is you've got to be pretty accurate when you're using the plastic gauge and making sure that you put the plastic gauge across the cap side because the actual rod uh, that connects to the crank is actually not completely uh, circular. It does have a little shape to it, and it's built that way. It's engineered that way to perform properly in the block. 
So you need to make sure the plastic gauge is on the right place. So since we had that discrepancy, we were a little tighter than we want. We went ahead and checked it with a, a better precision tool and realized that we had more clearance than we thought we did and we're good to go. So we'll uh, button up this part of the episode. We'll see you in the next one. So this completes our episode on piston assembly and checking your rod clearances. In the next episode, we're going to show you how to install the rings on the piston. As always, go to PartsPro.com to find your local Parts Pro Center who can help you with this project or whatever project you have for your performance vehicle. We'll see you in the next episode.